Hey up and welcome to another episode of Last Cast. It's the first time we've been able to get out filming since the lockdown, so it's probably been about sort of seven, eight, eight, nine weeks, something like that, before we've even had an opportunity to film. So we've just come here to a local reservoir that I've already fished probably a week ago, something like that. And we're going to just cover what I did that day. Basically, it should be something straightforward, nice and easy to understand, and not too complicated to just get us back into the swing of things. So with that said, we're here at Hilltop Reservoir today again in Slawit. As you can see, the water level's down a bit and it's a lovely hot day. Fish are probably around, you know, getting around to spawn in the bream and, uh, and roach were a bit, bit rough last week. So hopefully we'll, um, we'll get a few bites, but maybe a bit difficult. So we might even have to bring a few perch into the equation. In terms of what we're going to do today is we're going to cover short pole fishing. It's what I did the other week and as you can see it's a lovely little corner this where I don't need to chuck very far out to find sort of seven or eight foot of water. That's what I'm after today for, for depth wise and that's only at sort of five, six metres, something like that. So we're just going to tackle it with ground bait and a few different rigs trying to catch fish at different levels through the water obviously with it being sort of 20 odd degrees today. We're likely to catch them on the bottom initially and then possibly bring them up with loose feed but with these big reservoirs, especially this time of year when the fish are on the feed and moving around, you've got to make plenty of get plenty of baiting and try and draw them into your peg to keep them there obviously the pike will be active as well so i need to keep loose feeding to keep drawing the fish back into where i want to start catching them so with that said we'll look at the baits that i've got today so ground bait mix is dead simple i've just got equal parts frenzied hemp seed black census magic black and uh, gross gardons mix equal parts as i say and i've mixed it on the dry side what i've also included in that is some uh, of the crushed dry hemp seed as well. Like I say, we're going to try and catch fish through the water tank di at different levels, so I want a really active mix. Um, one thing that's worth mentioning is the bottom is really sort of rocky, as you can see with what we've got in front of us. That translates, translates into what we've got in front of us in the water. So in terms of catching skimmers and that sort of thing, it's not ideal for it because of the rocks and that. They don't tend to settle very well on it, and it's obviously hard to present a nice, nice clean hook bait in gravel. You need to keep lifting and dropping and making sure the fish are, are looking and following the bait down rather than just sitting there and you know it's likely to fall under a rock or something like that so the plan of, plan of attack today is have a nice active mix like i say have a good column of bait going through the water and try and catch fish at all levels so that's that's the ground bait mix covered rig wise as usual i've set up quite a lot of rigs but there's actually only sort of two or three principles that i'm applying with these i've got two deck rigs and then i've got pretty much six shallow rigs four of them are all the same the preston chianti rigs so i'll, I'll cover those first these what i'd expect to catch most of the fish on today if they come off bottom um, i've just got them in 4x10s and 4x12s and i've got them set at one foot intervals so it's six elastic at the top end oh 11 main lines strung number 10s down to a a six inch hook length of 010 um, Drennan Suplex fluorocarbon to an 18 B560. So nice positive hooks, decent strength of line because the fish here aren't line shy. So if I want, if I can try and get to swinging fishing, that's why I've gone for a heavier line. Just means it's more durable as well if we're catching a lot of fish. So I've got those set at two foot, three foot, four foot, and five foot. And then I've got a couple of deck rigs set up underneath them. As you can see, we've probably got seven, seven and a half foot of water today, and I've just set two deck rigs up, so I'll cover the first because they're both a little bit different. This one's one of my bread punch rigs, basically. It's a 4B18s. I've got a solid eights in, in the top, so nice and positive for swinging fish to hand. Um, I've got back shot behind there, and like I say, I've got a 4B, 4B18 sense SA2. Nice and heavy because, like I say, I'm going, I've got the, the through the water element covered with my shallow rigs, and if I, I'm wanting to catch fish on the bottom, I want to get a bait straight down to them and catch quick. So I've got a big a bulk there of number eights, and then I've just got number 10 droppers, two that are active, and then one little kicker shot there, just to make sure it doesn't tangle on the way down. Same hook length, or 10 uh, Drennan Suplex fluorocarbon to a 16B560. Now with this rig, like with bread punch, what I want to do is bomb the bait straight down, fish nice and positive, just touching bottom, if not slightly, up, slightly under depth and basically be lifting and dropping the rig, keeping it active. As I mentioned, with the gravel and the, the uh, rocks on the bottom, the fish won't have too long to inspect a bait. It's going to be in, and if they're going to have it, they're going to have it pretty quickly. Because if I leave it too long and lay on too much line, it's likely to find its way under a rock. So I'll be constantly lifting and dropping this rig and hopefully getting bites nice and quick. With a pencil style float, that's the old principle is you're not trying to lay a lot of line on the bottom and hold it steady. It's more a case of lowering in and striking nice and clean through it. So that's, that's one rig for fishing on the deck. The other rig is just in case a few skimmers crop up or the wind picks up. It's exactly the same sort of rig, same elastic, same main lines, etc. But I've got a, uh, a bodied uh, Garbolino DC, DC15 this is. So something with a bit more of a shoulder where I can hold on to the float. 
The bottom end of the rig's the same, but I've just got three number nine droppers on this, so a bit heavier for skimmer fishing. I may even block those into a double bulk. Same hook length as the other deck rig, 16B560 and 010. Um, but like I say, this will be just laid about an inch on, just in case there's a few skimmers in the peg where I need to give the, the rig sort of maybe 10, 20 seconds, something like that, for it to sit still and hopefully ca catch a skimmer or two. The other rigs that I've got set up, are just two uh, dibber style rigs for fishing shallow now this is if it's absolutely solid and i'm getting lots of bites shallow and i'm, I'm struggling to hit them basically these are sort of commercial uh, dibber rigs so i've got these set at two and three foot to marry up with the shallowest chianti rigs they're um on slightly heavier gear so 013 main lines in this case to all 11 hook lengths because i've got a an 18 b b911 with a band on there fishing banded maggot same shotting pattern but it's with number 12s this because they're slightly heavier hooks so i just want to even that fall out and the floats floats are uh, little 4b8s map maps ones so again they're just nice and nice and positive a thicker bristle like i say you're not going to be striking at loads of little silly bites you want them to go properly under so nice nice bristle on them and that's pretty much it as i say it's a lot of rigs to cover a lot of depths and it's just for fishing one line at five meters um but like i say it's a it's an option that as long as you've got options to catch fish at different levels say pike come in at low level and they start disturbing the peg then you can start bringing the fish up in the water so it just gives a bit of variety but that's what i've got set up today so what we'll do now is feed the peg i'm going to put in 10 balls initially to start with which might seem a lot but again there's plenty of fish in these big reservoirs and you need to draw them in um so i'm going to ball in seven balls and cup three really rich with um, with different baits in them so i'm going to cup, cup in three which is going to have mainly chopped worm quite a lot of dead maggots and quite a lot of hemp ideally today i'd have brought casters but with the, the amount of people that are out fishing you can't get casters this weekend so i've just brought two pints of maggots and i'm going to sort of bulk that out with hemp i've got some corn as well some f1 corn and some uh, some dead maggots as well they're going to go in the ground bit so bit of variety it's sort of standard skimmer and skimmer and roach fishing but I'm also putting plenty of chopped worm in just in case I can sort of uh, snare a couple of perch as well, especially if the roach are spawning. So that's what we're going to go with today. So I'll turn around on the box now, get the bait balled in, and then we'll see if we can get a few bites. Right, so I'm now going to feed the peg to kick off. What I've done is I'll just show you the ground bait before I actually put it in, is I've got seven of these to ball in. As you can see, not a great deal of feed content in there. There's just a few dead maggots, quite a lot of hemp and a bit of corn. So I've got seven of those to feed by hand that I'm going to ball in to create the noise and I'm going to cup three of these in, which as you can see they're much richer in bait, full of chopped worm these, plenty of hemp, plenty of dead maggots and just a few grains of corn. What I'm trying to do is create an area and then have a little epicentre where I've plumbed up that's nice and accurate so I can try and draw fish in to create a shoal but then I can nail them right on top of the chopped worm where hopefully I'll get the better stamped fish. So that's what I'm going to do now, so I'll just quickly... Uh, get my pole out, get the cupping kit in, and then I'll ball in, and then I'll cup those last three over the top of it. Right, so what I've done now is I've stood up on my box ready to ball in, so I've just got the cup on the end of the pole, and I'm just leaving that upside down so it's nice and buoyant as a target. I've, marked, I've lined up in line with my seat box leg with the, uh, the back of the... Um, the section of the pole that's going to give my distance marker as i say that won't move if you line it up with your leg or your hand that's liable to move and when you're fishing on rocks and you're fishing in a very small area where you've plumbed up that it's you know it's clean you want to make sure you're as accurate as possible so i'm, I'm lining up with uh, like i said with a leg on my box that's not going to move and i've got my marker out there in line with my far bank marker it's just a case of balling in Right, and that's the last ball there. As you can see, a nice general area, probably about three foot in line. What I've tried not to do is ball past the, the marker because I know it's sloping away from me, so I've just balled in on top or short. As you can see, loads of bits coming off those balls of ground bait, so it's nice and active. So hopefully with the noise, that should draw quite a few fish into the peg. Now it's just a case of cupping in those three more rich balls full of chopped worm and, uh, and dead maggots. What I'm also going to do is I've put a bit of hemp seed on top there, just to have that falling through the water as well. As I say, these are going to be cupped in really nice and accurate and create a bit of an epicentre over which I'm going to put my uh, me deck rigs. So I'm just making them up as I go along because obviously with the worm it's i've chopped it fairly coarse 
so it's going to break the balls up if I try and prepare them and then cup in sort of one after another. And then what I'm going to look to do to keep the, the interest in the peg is I'm going to just keep on feeding by hand maggots and maggots and hemp seed just to make the noise and draw the fish in and hopefully get them coming up off the bottom. So again, a bit, bit more hemp seed on top, and we'll get that cupped in. Again, I've mixed up probably, I don't know, two, two, three kilos of ground bait, something like that today, just in case I have an issue with, say, pike, and I need to ball in again and top the, top the peg up. I don't think 10 balls will last sort of six hours that we're going to fish today. All right, so that's the peg now fed. What we're going to do is go straight over the top of that with a deck rig. So I'll get my coupling kit out of the way and then we'll go in for the first chuck of the session. Right, so what I'm going to do is start on the uh, the pencil style rig, fish nice and positive and just with double, double, double red maggot on the hook. Again, you don't need to fish small hooks and tiny baits on here. Something nice and nice and positive like a double maggot hook bait or a section of worm or casters if you've got them is usually best. But I found with, with casters on here, especially with the amount of roach, you only sort of get one bite at cherry when you're going in if you like. With maggots, you, if you miss a bite, you can be straight back in, and especially when you're trying to catch large numbers of fish, say you're fishing for, for 200 fish or something like that, the time spent bringing, bringing the, uh, the rig back in and rebaiting with the caster as opposed to just fishing maggots, you know, is massive. There's a bite and a fish straight away. As you can see, straight away on top of that ground bait, that's within a couple of seconds, nice stamp roach, about a couple of ounce. Like I said, I've balled in 10 balls there, made loads of noise and straight away the fish are over the top of it. You can see double maggot hook bait, no need to, to um, change the hook bait. Again, if there's lots of fish, it's all about speed fishing this to try and build a weight. You can see what I've also done is left a good amount of bristle showing. Another nice roach. Yeah, I've left a, a good amount of bristle showing because again, it's not like we're canal fishing or anything like that. If they're going to have it, they're going to have it properly. But you can see just how quick I can, I can catch fishing like this with a nice 4B18s rig. It's quite a heavy bulk. But you can see what I'm doing is just swinging that out in line with my far bank marker, but in line with where the float's going to drop in and basically just dumping the rig on top of it. A little lift on the float there. The whole thing with this is trying to get into a rhythm of feeding. So I'm hopefully going to just put in a handful of hemp, handful of maggots, every single couple of fish, something like every fish or every couple of fish, and just see how we go from there. Gonna expect to catch a, a good run of fish initially and then they're likely to spook away from being caught so often. That was a bite on the drop there, so I might have to go on to shallow rigs already. So I'd expect to catch a few off the initial noise, and then with the, the sheer amount of food content down there, I'd expect, to bite, I'd expect bites to tail off a little bit, and then the stamp of the fish to get better and better as the session goes on. because obviously some of those balls that I've balled in haven't broken down yet, so the only bait that the fish could get to straight away is my hook bait, apart from the odd little bit that's coming off it. But once they start breaking down after five minutes, there's a lot more food items for the fish to choose from on the bottom then. So I'm going to keep lifting and dropping the rig and try and suss out if they are coming off bottom or if they're, they're happy to stay on the bottom and feed. Again, like I say, I've got all my options covered, so every, every foot of water I can present a bait in. 
little perch this time. So that's three fish on the same, same double maggot hook bait. As you can see, we're off to a good start already. I said, expect skinners and things like that, if they are going to turn up and feed in the peg to arrive sort of a couple of hours in once the roach and perch have, um, have sort of had their fill. As you can see, it's fantastic fishing on these these natural waters and it's something that I've certainly changed me, um, my way of fishing on. I used to be quite sort of conservative with the bait that I put in, it might only be sort of three, four balls of ground bait, but of more recent times I've decided that it's much better to be really positive. You've got to draw fish into your peg and feed them. And because they're not sort of bait or, or hook shy and there's that many fish in front of you, when you get a big shoal that's sitting there, then you can just hammer them one after another and like I say, you've got so much competition in your peg then, it, the fishing can be incredible. You can see a number eight's elastic, I can swing these fish straight to hand and I've not changed the hook bait yet. So again, what I've done in terms of getting my marker is I've made sure that it's on the joint of a pole, it's not halfway down a section or something, so I can feel it going through my hands rather than having to, to look and see where my marker is. Again, it's all about speeding up the process and making it nice, nice and efficient. The other thing I've done with it being nice and flat count today, I've gone for a, near, a really nice short line between pole float and tip. Just means I can be even quicker on hitting the bites. May just have to change that hook bait possibly. Hoping there'll be a bit more of a ripple on the, the lake as the day goes on. Because I think that'll just allow the fish to come a bit shallower. I think I'll just change the hook bait because occasionally on here the roach or the bigger roach can be a bit more wary of a hook bait if it's not um, if it's not sort of in, in good condition so I'll just nip this bulk up a bit tighter and then we'll get back out there and hopefully get into another run of fish. Right so we've just rebaited there, I've just um, tightened the, the stots up in the bulks, they're sliding around a bit, they're fantastic for being able to move your bulk up and down but occasionally just got to nip them up a bit tighter so it holds in position when you're speed fishing like this. Just pulled out of that one. Again another line that I've plumbed up today which just out of an, sort of an interest bet more than anything is I've plumbed up off the end of my keep necks occasionally there's um, big perch to be caught that will sit and look at the end of your keep net at times. Smaller perch that time. So already you can see we've had a, a nice selection of sizes of fish and a couple of species as well. Like I say, and that's, that's sort of the premise behind what we're, we're fishing with today, is I've not sort of fed it with a fish meal ground bait, pellets and corn and stuff like that, and tried to fish for skims on a bottom that, or an area of the, um, the reservoir that doesn't really suit itself to, for fish, to fishing for skimmers, where you need a clean bottom, ideally fishing on silt, where you can lay a bit of line on the deck. Like I say, in this area where it's, it's on the damn wall pretty much, it's very rocky. So it's better to try and keep the fish off the bottom and try and catch them sort of between a couple of inches off bottom and half depth, something like that. Because you will, you will ca catch the odd skimmer. But as I say, I'm not, I'm not sort of pigeonholing myself to just try and catch skimmers and sort of big roach or, and that sort of thing. It's more a case of just getting bites consistently and keeping the fish in your peg.
You know, that was just on the lift there. And there's a few smaller perch in the peg. Occasionally, this can be the case when there's a when a pike's moved into the swim, the roach will disappear, but the perch will still quite happily sit there. So we may have issues with pike coming into the peg today, but again, that's why I've I've looked to create a nice big feed area and give the fish sort of options as to where they can sit in the peg and I can still catch them, i.e. fishing around the feed area, but also fishing at different depths, sort of if the fish wants to come sort of two foot off under the surface, something like that, to get away from the pike, I can also catch them and feed them there. There you go, that was before the, the drop has settled. You can see how that float was held up then. That's why I like fishing quite positive, uh, positive droppers on these rigs. So in this case, it's number 10s, and you can see on, on this bristle, it really registers well. It's a nice roach. I mean, with it being as calm as it is today, you could probably get away with fishing a whip, but quite often on here, especially with it being in a corner as well, um, where the, the wind tends to blow down, you couldn't really get away with the whip because of the length of line you'd have to fish to get into that sort of depth of six, seven foot. That feels like a slightly better fish. It'll be a slightly bigger perch, this. It is. But again, you can see a number eight solid set, fairly pingy, is perfect. You can still swing these fish out up to sort of four or five ounce even. As you can see, it's lovely fishing though. It's a bite of chuck and as I say, because I've fed plenty of bait, I'm confident that the fish will stay in the peg. If I'd have fed sort of two, three balls of ground bait, you'd probably get a run of fish like this initially. But as soon as you get a pike in the peg, you'd have to refeed and top up again to draw them back in. But I'm confident that there'll be plenty of feed out there for the next probably couple of hours before I have to look to top up. Again, if I get problems where I'm missing lots of bites because the fish are coming right up off the bottom and I want to try and pin them back down again, I can always introduce a ball of ground bait. So I've got options of pretty much controlling where the fish sit as well in the peg. A small perch on that time. So I'm already thinking that there might be some fish sat a couple of feet off the bottom. I've already had a couple of lift bites from the, the roach. There's another one. And that might be down to the fact I'm loose feeding. That's a better, better roach. I say the perch seem to be on the bottom and the roach seem to be just off. Because the, the roach weigh, he weigh heavier as well, if I can sort of target the roach, that's what I'll try and do. But we'll carry on with this deck rig for a bit before I decide to try and try and fish shallow or even I could try and bring this rig off bottom. But what I've tended to find on here is that you get a better stamp of fish nearer the bottom. If you can catch them on your deck rigs, it tends to be a bit better. What I'm also doing is hooking the maggots fairly crudely just to make sure that they do stay on in the event that I do miss a bite. Again, I'm fishing fairly big hooks and striking nice and hard, so I've got no worry of, of sort of not, not setting the hook because I'm fishing, say, too small of a hook and it's going to get masked by the bait. Nice size 16, you can get away with it. See, that fish has taken it probably a couple of feet beneath the surface. Funnily enough, it's a little perch. You could see there the, the bulk didn't even settle. So even though he's nicked one of the maggots, I'll go out on a single maggot, just for the sake of speed fishing. But you can imagine if you can keep this up all day, I've already lost count of how many fish I've had in the first sort of 15 minutes. You can imagine how good of a weight you can build. There's a small fish on that time. You can see just how many fish are in the peg. And like I say, they're at all levels, which in, in some cases, say if you're fishing canals or 
commercials, that's not what you want really. You want to get them settled at a depth. Whereas here, because of the pike, as long as I've got fish in the area, I can catch them at any depth with the rigs that I've got. Might need to change that hook bit. So I think what we'll do now is crack on with this. As you can see, we've probably 15 minutes in, something like that. We're already start starting to build a weight, so it's probably going to be much of the same until, as I say, the, the weather warms up a little bit and we might start catching on the shallow rigs. But we'll plug away with this until the fish become a bit unsettled or they start coming off bottom. And then we'll update you when we have to switch rigs. Right, so I've just had two fish in a row now where the bulk's barely settled. Well, it's not even settled even. They've, um, they're coming right up in the water now. I've had a couple of perch up there and a couple of roach. And it's probably, what, two, three seconds after the rig's gone in, so I'm suspecting they're probably between two and four foot deep. So, because I've had a few doing that, I'm going to see if there's actually a, a decent shoal of fish sat shallow where I can present a nice rig to them. So I'm going to start on my three foot rig. Like I said, I don't think they, I don't think it's worth going to four and five foot. And if I can catch them shallower, I can catch them quicker. So just going to fish single maggot. Like I say, what I've done with these two shallow, shallowest of the Chianti rigs is I've got the duplicates at the same depths on the uh, the Dibber rigs with banded maggots. So if it turns out that it's absolutely solid, then I can always switch on to those. So again, I've gone for a slightly softer elastic, a number six in this case. Because when you are catching them shallow, you want to make sure that they're not flashing in the water and splashing around too much. And what I can do is also mix it up with the shotting pattern. I've spread it evenly initially, and that carbon stem's just following the maggot down nicely, so I can read where the fish are taking the bait. If they're taking it, if the float's still on an angle, I can tell that they're sort of two foot or, or less. There's a bite. That was after the, the rig had reached full depth, that one. It's a nice little perch. So I'm going to try feeding this sort of a bit more positively now, fishing shallow, just to see if I can get them up off the deck. Again, if it turns out that they become finicky or they get spooked by something, I can always put a ball of ground bait to put them down again. As I say, you don't need to be concerned with overfeeding on venues like this. Little indication there, and that rig's gone at probably two and a half foot deep. That's a nice stamp roach, is that? If it turns out that I'm catching these sort of one a chuck and it's every single time when it does reach that depth, then I'll switch to the, um, like I say, the, the rig with the dibber float and the banded, banded maggot for that depth of fishing just to speed up the process. But again, this is why it's important to have, have shallow rigs, but cover all the depths. And like I say, with fishing a nice strung rig, I can read the float as it's falling through. And I can understand at what depth the fish are taking. So I know that it's not worth picking up a two foot rig now because it's after the last sort of, the last drop has pretty much settled. So they're just around three, two and a half to three foot deep. So again, that float settled and it's gone straight away. So all these fish that I've had are definitely taking at, like I say, three foot, two and a half to three foot. They're not coming up any shallower yet. Conversely, if I'd have gone on, if I wasn't getting any bites, I'd go to the four foot rig. If I wasn't getting bites on that, I'd go to the five foot rig or on the deck. But it's noticeable that as, as I've been loose feeding, the fish have come up off the bottom and like I say, with my 4B18's bulk not getting down, that tells me that there's a, a shoal of fish sat shallow then. So as long as I pick up the right shallow rig, I can start catching them consistently. And that's what's happening now. That one's just dropped off as that little perch. That's why it might look quite extreme to have so many rigs set up. But as I say, it means that I can cover all my depths and also the big thing as well with it being sort of speed fishing and having to be quick on the bites when it's fairly calm like this is there's no point having two rigs and trying to set them with like say fishing at three foot and five foot but having two foot of line above the float because you're not, just not going to be as quick on the bites so 
Again, I've not really caught a better stamp fish at all today so far in the first sort of, what we're about 40 minutes in, something like that. Probably had 30 or so fish already, but it's not been a case that I've, I've noticed the stamp of roach getting better of. I've had a couple of six to eight ounce fish. But again, like I said, that, that's, those bigger fish are what I expect to catch within a couple of hours, something like that. I think the small fish will come to the noise initially, and then gradually the stamp of fish will get bigger from there. Might have to change that maggot, it might just be a little bit bust, that one. Nope. Just twitched it in a little perch a second it. Again, the next couple of chucks, I might just try the uh, the banded maggot rig and just see if it's quicker. It's worth mentioning what I've done with the, the rigs where I've got a banded maggot instead of a barbed hook like this, is I've actually set the elastic on a, a number five instead of a six. Just because it's barbless, I want to make sure that there's always some elastic coming out of the pole, so I'm not likely to, to have the hook drop out. Whereas barbed hooks you obviously need a, a slightly pokier elastic to set the hook because of the barb. Interesting, that roach took at about probably two foot. The, the float was still on quite a bit of an angle when that one took, so it might be a case that they are coming up even higher in the water. What I'm also doing is I'm maintaining a tight line between float and pole tip just so I can be as quick on the bites as possible. And I've also got three number nine back shot on, on all my rigs, just to maintain that tight line, because it doesn't take much on these reservoirs for the, the wind to pick up. When it does, if you've got, if you don't have back shot on your float, then the, especially fishing fairly light floats like these four bit ends, the wind's like to just take control of the rig and ruin your presentation. So it's always worth doing on reservoirs is having those back shots on there. And I'll try different forms of presentation when I'm fishing shallow at like this. I'll try and lay the rig out, go past the pole tip, see if there's some better fish hanging off the back of the feed. Or if it's, this feels a bit better. Or if it's worth just slapping the rig over. That's a little perch. So I'll say we'll carry on with this and I might just try fishing on one of the um, the banded maggot rigs. But I, that's like I say, I'm getting I'm getting bites fairly consistently and I'm not missing them too much, so I don't think it's quite worth switching on to, to one of those banded maggot rigs yet until it like I say the peg becomes absolutely solid with fish. See, that was quite a fast little bite there. Definitely seems they're taking the bait a little bit higher up in the water. Might be able to catch a few on the two foot rig. As I say, until it becomes clear that that's definitely the way to go, then I won't make a change until then. We're still getting bites. When the rig's settled and I'm not getting sort of bites every single time I lay the rig in within two foot of the surface. And until that starts to happen consistently, that's when I'll, I'll switch onto a two foot rig. Another nice little perch.
So I think what we'll do, we'll crack on now with this and keep you updated if we start getting into a few bigger fish. Right, I've just looked to slightly better fish now. This feels like it could be a small skimmer or something. And it is. And not on the rig that I've been trying to use for the skimmers, but it's interesting there. The peg's just gone a, a little bit quiet again. I've just lifted and dropped this in. It was a much slower bite and we've just hooked a nice little skimmer. Perfectly hooked right in the bottom lip. It's interesting though, because I've tried the, the rig, like I said, about uh, setting up for the bream earlier with a bodied float and a section of worm. And I tried that for a good sort of 10 minutes when the peg went quiet and didn't get a single bite off them. And I've just had a run of two, two roach and a perch, but it's been a bit steadier for the bites. And then suddenly I've had a skimmer. So it'll be interesting to see if I get another one. Now what's important as well is I've made note of how, how soon after topping up with three balls that I've had that skimmer. Because interestingly, when I came and fished this exactly the same way a couple of weeks ago, it was around the half hour mark after topping up for the first time when I had the skimmer. It's a small fish this time. And it's quite interesting that quite often on these sort of natural venues, the, the, you get sort of a regularity to, to what happens when you feed. So initially I had plenty of small fish after balling and creating not a lot of noise and then after the top up, it's been half an hour and I've had a skimmer. But straight away after topping up I end up catching, as you saw, a good run of sort of five, six, seven decent quality roach. I might say what I've done now is I've completely cut out the, the loose fed maggots. And if I feel like I need to draw fish into the peg, I might just feed a little nugget or I might feed, say, by hand, just create a bit of noise, hemp and corn. As you can see, the stamp of roach now, slightly bigger than what we were catching initially. And we've had that skimmer, so hopefully, we might get one or two more of those as the day progresses. So it's not a, it's not a perfect sort of skimmer peg is this in terms of the bottom and the depths and the range that you're fishing but that's not to say you can't have the odd one or two crop up in your peg like I was explaining at the start of the uh, the session so again, I think one of the reasons why I've not had those skimmers on the I've not had a skimmer or any proper bite sort of on that uh, heavier rig where I'm, or the, the bodied float rig where I'm laying an inch on, is just because the, the bait's getting hidden behind the stones, I think. You can see how quickly you can start to build a weight fishing like this. Again, quite often with these reservoirs, there's no need to fish sort of long pole, especially if you get the, the depth right at the time of year. So it's nice and warm, there's no need to find sort of top four, top five of depth. If you can find sort of six, seven foot of water like we have today, there's plenty of fish in there. And especially if you, you get the bait in and feed them and feed nice and positive and fish fairly positive, you can do a really good weight fishing like this. I say it's been very interesting though after topping up that the perch seem to have moved out of the peg and it's more roach and like I say we've had that skimmer as well which is good. So I'm, I'm going to also continue to try sweet corn periodically but again it's more of a bait for leaving on the bottom is that and when you're catching roach like this on the maggot and you're catching them nice and quick, I'd rather be catching these than waiting sort of 10 minutes and not having confidence that the, uh, the hook bait's visible to the fish. And clearly, like I say, by fishing with a rig like this and lifting and dropping and just fishing with double maggot, you've still got a chance of catching skimmers. Might not be the most conventional way of presenting a rig to them, but you've still got a chance of catching them, but also you can catch the roach and perch as well. So I'm already thinking that because I've, I've fed in total 13 balls today of ground bait, probably just going to keep the, the next top up with a single ball after, say, an hour after the previous top up. It seems the fish have settled now. So as soon as it starts to quieten down or around the hour mark, something like that since the top up, 
that's when I'll I'll look to introduce another ball. But I'm just going to fish this top up out for the time being and hopefully put a few more quality roach in the net and maybe the odd skimmer if we're lucky. Right, so we're getting into the last half hour of the session now, so it's pretty much been consistent all the way through. I've just put in sort of three three balls of ground bait for the final top up with an hour to go and it, again it's just brought the roach back into the peg. It's been fantastic fishing today, it's been really consistent, obviously we started off with attacking the peg with a lot of ground bait, caught well initially, loose feeding maggots, which then promptly brought the fish up and obviously then we, we got in, into a bit of a, a problem with all the small perch that came into the peg and we ended up catching a lot of those shallow. So the big change today has been moving to topping up with big balls of ground bait to pin the fish down and fish in deck rigs instead and cutting out the loose fed maggots. So after that second hour I've, not, I've hardly loose fed any maggots at all. And it's made a world of difference. It's meant that we've started catching probably 80% roach and sort of 20% perch, something like that. So what we're going to do now is crack on for the last sort of 20 minutes and just see if we can put a few more fish in the net. We've not had any more bonus fish today. We've not had any big, specifically big roach or perch or even uh, any more skimmers. We've just had that one decent skimmer today. But again, that's what I expected with the peg being the nature that it is. With the... Uh, with the bottom being so rocky, it's just not its not an ideal skimmer peg. As I say, it's been interesting today to try and suss out where best to, to pin the fish, whether it was a case of getting them up off the bottom and catching shallow, which I think if we'd have had casters today, that would have been a really good shout for catching quality roach. But because we've had to loose feed maggots, that's what's brought all the small perch into the peg. But it's been a lovely day's fishing. As I say, we've had bites all day. It's been a couple of... The times where it sort of died off where you could tell a pike could come into the peg but then it was just a case of putting another ball, the ball of ground bait in which I think tends to spook the pike out of the area and obviously the roach then comes straight back to that. So I don't know how many fish we've caught today but it's, it's well over a hundred and as for the weight again it's hard to, hard to judge because it's been hard to keep track of it. I don't think we're on for a mega weight because the stamp of the fish being sort of between an ounce and three ounce not many much bigger. But again, when you're catching consistently like this and getting plenty of bites, that's what you want this time of year. So as I've said, what we'll do is we'll crack on for the last sort of 20, 25 minutes, something like that. See if we can put a few more, a few more silvers in the net, a few more of these roach and the odd perch. And then we'll obviously weigh them in at the end and see what we've caught. I don't know that it's over sort of 10, 15 pound, but it could be nearer 20. I'd say it's hard to judge. But it's been a lovely consistent day's fishing and the weather's been perfect as well so as i've said we'll crack on now and then it will uh, catch up at the weigh-ins when we have a look and see what we've caught at the end right so there's a bite and we'll call this the last fish of the session feels a bit like a skimmer this actually So we've come to the end of a six hour stint here, up at Hilltop. It's a lovely skimmer, is this? Unfortunately, like I say, we don't fish more than six hours, so we'll get this one in the net. We'll bring the net out and have a look at what we've caught. That's a lovely fish to finish on, only the second skimmer of the day, but a good, good half pound, that one. Just slip the hook out and then we'll get him put in the keep net. Lovely fish. Right, let's have a look at what we've caught. Right, so as you can see there, that's our final bag of fish. It's probably a good couple of hundred fish in there. It's absolutely stuffed with, uh, with roach, plenty of perch as well from the first couple of hours and a couple of skimmers as well. It's been a fantastic day's fishing. We've had bites all day. It's required a bit of sussing out and I think certainly made a massive difference changing from loose feeding maggots to fishing that positive uh, pencil style rig and just topping up with ground bait pretty consistently and that's brought the roach into the peg. As you can see, we got plagued by plenty of perch of that sort of size today but we've ended up catching a nice stamp of roach that's just weighed that little bit more we've probably got a good 12 or 13 pound as you can see an absolutely stuffed bag so it's been a fantastic day here at hilltop reservoir hopefully there's one or two things you can pick up and apply to your local reservoir fishing but as i say it's been nice to get back out on the bank and do a bit of filming so as always from last cast thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one